very well for them. 500 crores per quarter is the run rate that they're clocking in there. It's the highest ever. By the way, look at the market. It's now under a bit of pressure. The Nifty is down about 80-odd points. The Sensex is down 250 points. And apart from the Adani Group stocks, in any case, which have a reason to be weak, uh, it is the technology names, HCL Tech, uh, that's Infosys, uh, Tech Mahindra, that are all under pressure now. Uh, so that's one pocket that's sort of moved to the back foot right now. You know, for HCL <clears throat> Tech, in the MSCI uh, indices, there is a weightage reduction. Mm. And that came in as a bit of a negative surprise. And there will be outflow. So analysts estimate the outflow could be to the tune of 100, 110 million dollars. Mm. So it was just that bit of a negative surprise. And plus, of course, Nasdaq was down 1%. So there is a rub off impact rub -off across impact. Uh, the rest of the IT pack. Absolutely. Let's do one thing. Let's also move on and talk about the consumption space because there there's a slowdown as well. Sapphire Foods posted a sluggish Q3 earnings. Revenues have seen a 17% rise, but the QSR chain operator's margins have contracted on a year-on-year -year basis. Sanjay Purohit, who's the whole time director and group CEO of Sapphire Foods, joins us on the show now. Uh, Sanjay, good morning and thanks for joining in. I wanted to ask you about what explains the weakness that you've seen uh, in the business this time around. Um, you know, is there that there is a general slowdown in consumption uh, there is this post i mean of course there was a lot of pent up demand post covid now is that normalizing and what do you see as the way forward what kind of an average growth do you think you can do so uh, we've seen actually a really good run for the last perhaps four to six quarters so at some mm -hmm. stage it had to normalize a bit quarter three last year was perhaps our best ever quarter um, even quarter two this year, we had a really strong quarter on both, uh, on Pizza Hut especially. Uh, post Diwali is when we have seen some sluggishness of demand and, uh, you know, um, therefore same store sales growth uh, coming down a bit. Um, mm -hmm. We had guided in the region of 5 to 7% and KFC we came in at about 3%, so below par and Pizza Hut at minus 4 um, mm. I think this a little bit cyclical up and down is what we will always see in the Indian market. But the general trend on a long term basis is always rising. So this guidance, right, of five to seven percent that you had given, uh, you didn't meet that this time. But would you hold on to it for the full year, or would you want to scale it down, considering that Pizza Hut has seen uh, sort of a degrowth? What do you think you'll end the year with in terms of same store sales growth, and what's the outlook for FY24? So I, I must stress here that this guidance is not a quarter guidance. This guidance sure. is um, general guidance over perhaps three to four years. When people ask us, what do we expect our revenues to grow at? I say in the region of about 23, 25%, where six, five to 7% will come from same store sales growth and the balance will come from new store expansion. So over the last year itself, we've seen nearly 30% new stores on both the brands. And therefore, uh, this level of same store sales growth is, if we are able to achieve, is good. This sluggishness that we have seen over the last two months does continue into uh, the first quarter of this year, first of the calendar year. But again, I think these are good times. When, when you've got competitive times, I think trusted brands, big brands start to do well. If we double down on our marketing plans, on our customer service, on continuing to improve accessibility, on continuing to uh, improve ease of operations for consumers, both dine-in, digital, I think this is actually a good time um, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, all right. Hi, Sanjay. Good morning. Uh, you know, so 20-25% is what you're guiding for, uh, you know, for the next few years, if I look at it on an average. And I believe yes. that your EBITDA growth will be better. Right, it should be higher than what your sales growth does. That would imply that margin should improve from year on. So on both the yes. brands, if you could give us individually, what kind of a margin outlook do we have out there? And if you could give us for the consolidated entity as well, what are the margins we're looking at? Go ahead. So this is on both, the, uh, this is on the consolidated business, that revenue should grow in the region of 23, 25% and EBITDA in the region of 30. Now you might have a year when it it is um, better than this, and you might have a year when it is slightly, uh, you know, short of this. But yes. this is the guidance over a, a three-year period. And uh, typically, as long as long-term trends keep improving, the short-term quarter-on-quarter numbers we should be uh, less concerned sure. about.
the growth opportunities on both KFC and Pizza Hut, we believe, are uh, similar, and that's why we um, our our store expansion on both the brands have has been quite strong. And I think mm. uh, this is where we'd like to continue to focus on as we uh, go forward, Nigel. On the margins, uh, Sanjay, you know, that's where the street is quite optimistic that the margins will scale up from here. And going by the numbers, you're saying the operating profit growth will be better than the sales growth. So where do the margins head, you know, consolidated basis and break it up individually as well for both those two brands? Yeah. Um, so margins should increase uh, higher than sales growth over a three, four year perspective. I think what we have seen in the past nine months, Nigel, has been quite uh, uh, something that we've not witnessed perhaps over the last two decades, where inflation has been double digit in the mid to high teens. And that has resulted in us uh, taking price increases also of a uh, higher order than we have ever taken before. Now, when you're taking 8 9% price increase, but inflation is at perhaps 10 15 that's when you get you know, Sanjay. Price. You know, Sanjay, as a consumer as well, it gets very difficult, right? Because the price increase are coming about. But, you know, from the stock market perspective, they like to know both. I think on KFC, you were guiding closer to around 20% margins. And on Pizza Correct. Hut, you were talking about mid-teens. So do you stick to that? Yes, undoubtedly. Uh, and again, I want to stress here, Nigel, uh, quarter on quarter or perhaps a six-month period sh sh should not uh, affect the way that we see both the brands over a uh, medium to long-term perspective. Over the long-term, KFC at 20%, Pizza Hut today is early teens, should go up to mid-teens over a period of time. On the top line, though, I just had one question, you know, for a slightly medium term, you spoke about how there is demand sluggishness, post, some slowdown post-Diwali. You're also getting hit by a lot of competition. Popeyes, for example, they have their presence in Bangalore. That perhaps has impacted KFC's business. Uh, is that something that you're looking to navigate as well? And if yes, how? So undoubtedly, when, like I said, we've had six quarters of a really good run. And when uh, things are going well, then many people jump into the fray. And, um, uh, and uh, so in good times, more people jump in. But the reverse happens when you get sluggishness. That is the time when big brands have the best opportunity to actually continue to do well. So from our focus is quite clear. We've got an innovation pipeline that addresses the brand loyalists as well as the entry value consumer. We're focusing on our customer service, dine-in, delivery, digital. We're focusing yes. on improving accessibility. So I think these are uh, tough times, mm -hmm. a good time for big brands. Okay, all right, Sanjay. Very quickly, in the last time I quizzed you about Sri, Sri Lanka, you told me that it's moved out of the ICU into the ward bed. Is it going to be discharged from the hospital now? Are things on the mend in Sri Lanka? So from an operating conditions perspective, Nigel, they're um, absolutely on the mend. We have very little disruptions. But then what is kicked in is the impact on consumer wallets. So you found, found inflation at about 90%. We've taken price increases uh, cumulatively in the region of 50 60%. Taxes have increased. Therefore, consumer wallets have definitely got impacted. I think it will last for the next two, th two to three quarters. And then towards the end of 23 and the beginning of 24, Sri Lanka as an economy should start to grow back. And then our strong presence, we are the number one QSR brand there. All of that will start to kick in very strongly. Sanjay, one word answer. You said that demand was sluggish, continues to be sluggish. Was the January and the early part of February as weak as what we've seen post Diwali or has it gotten better or worse? Yes, yeah, similar. Similar. Okay. And that would be... Up. Huh? <laughs> similar. One word okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, uh, Sanjay, for joining in. That's the word coming in from the whole time director and CEO of Sapphire Foods India. Uh, let's uh, move on now. We've got another corporate conversation waiting by Sula Vineyards. The stock is uh, surging. It's up close to about 6 odd percent. Good set of Q3 earnings coming in, record-breaking quarter, in fact, on the revenue, EBITDA, and profit after tax. The revenue contribution from their own brands and the elite and premium segment has increased. Rajiv Saman, the MD and CEO of Sula Vineyards, is now with us on the show. Now